Hello everybody and welcome back to KF Plus LEGO Mastery. Today, I have the newest tutorial for my high performance one cylinder LEGO vacuum engine. This engine is capable of exceeding up to 4500 RPM, sometimes upwards of 6000 if you do build it correctly. In today's video, I will be doing the full step-by-step -step tutorial for this engine. Because of how fast it can actually um, go, it does produce more power and is more efficient. And this engine is a very smooth running one. It turns over very smoothly, smoothly, and it incorporates a performance piston for minimal friction. Without any further ado, let's get right into the step-by-step -step tutorial. Here are all the pieces that you will need for this engine. Feel free to pause and review parts that you will need. Starting off, we have the piston. It is a performance piston designed originally by Hamburger Head, or now more commonly referred to as um, Sneed's Garage, I believe. So he made this piston about um, four or five years ago, and it has been to date one of the best piston designs for LEGO vacuum engines. This is not the um, specific piston that will be in the engine in the final product. This is a separate piston that I'm just building um, for the demonstration because the um, piston in the engine is actually glued together. So as you can see, there is a little bit of residue from the old gluing of this piston. But basically, if you do want to glue the piston together, apply it right down the middle and then put on the 4x4 plate just like that and that's how you glue the piston wait for it to dry obviously but this one is not glued just put the piston aside for now moving on to the valve it is um, equally as simple basically this design um, uses the one and a half crank arms commonly found in any lego engine kits or lego kits that um, have the fake Lego engines in them. This valve is a performance valve, so it does incorporate um, the one by one hole upgrade that I showcased on my channel a while back, almost a year actually. But this design incorporates higher airflow and better performance for your vacuum engine. Definitely something I would recommend building. And this is important, make sure that the flat part of this L piece here is facing towards the side of the crank here that has the bushing. So that's great. Moving right along to the throttle body. This design was inspired by Big Z18 and his design incorporates a sliding mechanism that allows for less leakage of air when the vacuum is applied, which in turn leads to more efficiency and it is more compact as well. So it is a lot easier to incorporate into any of your builds. I personally recommend this throttle type for anyone who wants to build a high performing engine. Thank you. 
So there we go, this is the throttle completed. As you can see, when we flip this lever, this opens and closes this latch, and the round piece here is to allow a little bit of vacuum into the engine so that it can idle properly. So we can also just put this off to the side for now. Now that we've gotten most of the basic components of the engine out of the way, it's time to start actually building the engine. This particular flywheel requires just about three and two thirds raise off the ground. So that is what we're going to be doing. Just follow along as I do and build it like I do and you will get optimal performance out of your engine. You can obviously substitute most of these bricks for smaller denominations, like instead of using a 2x8 here, I'm using two 2x4s. And the reason why I'm using the longer uh, lift arm beams here is so that we can um, have some mounting points if you want to put this in say, for example, a transmission or a car or something like that. So this is the base completed. As you can see, very sturdy design, very stable and hard to break. So we're gonna take our valve and we're going to put it like this. So in the center hole, and we're just gonna to throw it in right there. And we're gonna take a too long axle, throw it in like this then take the cr crank for the piston and point it like this, so to the left. And this will allow you to get the timing for the engine to be running count or to be running clockwise. As you can see, the valve crank is 90 degrees ahead in the direction that the engine will be spinning. Take a three long axle and put a half stud bushing through it like this. Then simply put the axle in there then take the piston this is the piston that is glued so it's hard to take apart and it won't break and put that in here you might want to take this piece off so that it will be a little bit easier now take another half stud bushing and just lock the piston in place Let's take this piece and it, you will need this piece specifically and just shove it like this. And now we're gonna take a seven long axle, throw it on here like that. And this will be the output of the engine. Take another half stud bushing and put it down the axle. Now the reason why we aren't just using another one of the tan crank pieces is because um, utilizing the bushing and the too long beam here, we are able to get a stronger connection in the axle here. Take two of these um, blue connector pins, put these bushings here, and simply apply them right here. Take two more half stud bushings, on the axle and then take this throw it on right there now this axle will be very hard to take out so in order to start building up the cylinder walls first we need to apply a one plate layer like this so take two one by sixes and two one by fours and put them around like this personally i'm going to be using one clear wall like this and one gray colored wall like this. Take two of these and they do have to be a whole stud thick because the valve will also be rubbing on top of them. And 
just put them on like this. Build two studs below it like this. So this would be five bricks tall. And then I'll obviously before you do that, make sure the piston is on this side of the cylinder wall. And then put the last cylinder wall in place. Take these two pieces and put them on just like this. And there you go. That is the all the cylinder walls completed. I did forget to mention this in the parts list picture, but you will need um, some of these pieces. So this is three bricks tall, one plate, and then one by five by one brick right there. And make sure that your valve is up. All the one by one parts in this are straight. Like that. Take the other one and that will secure your valve in place just like this. Take two one by tens, put them on like this, a one by four, and then your cylinder head of choice, I'm just using a gray six by six base plate. everything lines up correctly and that is the cylinder complete. Take um, a 2x6 and a 1x6, put them together like this, then put a 2x2 two two tile and then a 1x4 just like this and this will go right underneath like that. Take two 1x1 one one with holes, throw them on like that. Let's take another three by three by one brick, put it under here like this, and then you will actually need to take a one by six and a one by six plate and just stick them under like this. Simply push the cylinder head back down onto it like this. We are going to take our throttle and simply stick it on just like that. So this is actually the entire engine complete. Now for a flywheel, I would either recommend a big tire like this if you want cool sound and maintain performance, but if you want a very, very responsive throttle, I would opt for a smaller flywheel. It doesn't have to be anything big. In fact, it could just be a gear if you'd like. As long as it carries the piston through the stroke, it's all you really need. So everyone, now that we have actually finished the one cylinder engine, let's go ahead and run it so you can see just how good it performs. If you did enjoy today's tutorial on my high-performing one-cylinder vacuum engine, please be sure to hit the subscribe button as well as leave a like, and you can always unsubscribe if you would like. But that's going to wrap up today's video. I hope you all did enjoy, and I will see you all in the next video. See you later.